we're still cracking away at this section. We are three-fourths the way through January, so hopefully if you've made some resolutions, you have made some headway on those resolutions. If you haven't made some resolutions, hopefully you have taken a good, hard, objective look at your life or yourself or your relationships or your career, some dimension of your life that you are not so satisfied with and at least began to introspect it. Perhaps you have taken a good hard look at your sense of self, self-care, self-love. And if you don't know where else to start, that's always a place you can start. Not selfish. Self-care. Take better care of your eating. Take better care of your self-talk. Take better care of your exercise. Take better care of your time management. Take better care of your sleep. Take better care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Those are two easy to offer resolutions. Um, <coughs> if you're still struggling in the resolution department, oop, my light is right in the way and I didn't even notice. There we go. Now you're not so also blinded. Um, but if you're still struggling in the resolution department or you want to change your life, legitimately want to change and change has been too big and too impossible and you can't seem to make any groundwork no matter how many times you try this. Those are two really easy departments and one thing you need to know about love acting from a place of love you will explore and experience people in a whole new way you will not change them they don't need to change for you to change when you decide to offer kindness, love, and warmth to people, my in relationship with my mother, for instance, has been strained my entire life. And only as I've gotten older, the gulf has grown golfier, let's just say. Uh, and we reached an age where we realized that our parents aren't perfect. They don't know everything. Then we reach another age where we realize they're flawed, normal people. Then we reach another age where us and or our friends begin to have children and we realize that our parents were having children and we're thinking, oh my God, that person's going to be an, a parent forming a small child's mind. My parents really did the best they could to just simply keep me alive. I'm surprised I'm alive. I should be grateful for that. We begin to realize our parents are more and more human and every human is how they are, how they are, how they are, how they are until they're not. And they can only make themselves how they're not when they're not. And you can carry around those grudges and those attitudes and those reactions and just wait with open arms forever for the people around you to change, for them to give you love, for them to be something different than they are. I'm not saying you have to reinvite toxic people into your life. If people were truly toxic, abusive, etc. to you, you, you needn't open that back up. Um, some doors are closed for a reason. But my mother, like myself, not about to diss my mom, has mental illness issues. She's her own kind of lady. She does things her way. And it's a unique way. And I, of all people, should be able to be empathetic to that and to realize that she is who she is, who she is, who she is. She did the best she could. She came from a loving place and did the best that she could possibly do and does the best that she can possibly do. 
She is who she is. She is not going to change. She doesn't need to change. I need to change. I'm using this as an example for you guys to, to follow to see how this is, this works and can dramatically change your relationships and your experience of life. Um, I of all people should understand. Uh, I have mental illness. I have issues that are quirky. Then <laughs> ways of being that are quirky. And I cannot be any different than I am. Some things I can change, some things are are who I am, what I am, how I operate. Um, and it just is what it is I am, who I am. Maybe someday I'll cross some magic threshold and I'll, I'll be different in those arenas. But when it comes to the things that come along with my mental health conditions, um, I work on a little bit of a different reality scope than other people. <laughs> and so I'm, I can be a little bit awkward and strange and different. And how would it possibly be to be constantly sized up that I have to be different than I am in order to be lovable when I, I can't be anything different than I am? And I'm doing the best that I can. Changing the way I feel about my mother to a place of love and acceptance, changing the way I interact with my mother, keeping contact with her, not getting, thinking of conversations with her about, you know, what she's watching on TV uh, or the dogs playing together and not a question about me or, or what's going on in my life as something that I'm missing that's just proof that she doesn't care as proof that she's not invested in me it's proof of nothing that's just my mom it's how she's always been that's coming from me that's coming from my critical judgment like keeping a check score of her her entire life when she is just being herself She's been that way. She is that way. She'll always be that way. It doesn't mean she doesn't love me. That's just how she is. And coming to accept people how they are and just you just show them love. The walls come down for you. And you experience your situation differently. The people around you don't have to change for you to change. For you to offer love. For you to offer kindness. People don't need to be different for you to become different. And when you become different, they may not become different <laughs> just because people can become different on their own. I'm way sidetracking, but if we're so far in and people really want to change something about their life to make their life better, happier, more stable, more calm, uh, kindness to self, kindness to others. Without holding yourself to a bar of if you don't achieve this in this year, you're a failure. No pressure. The only ob object you have to achieve is to be kinder to yourself. I think we can all manage that. To care for yourself a little bit better. Care for yourself the way that you would care for someone you loved. Because when we're adults, we're the only one that can care for ourselves. And... You need to get rid of those dark feelings and mismanagement of yourself. You treat yourself the way you would treat your own child. Talk to yourself the way you talk to your own child. Love yourself more this year. We're still into January, still got plenty of time. At least practice that and see how things change. You don't need to become the president You don't have to acquire a million dollars to have a happier life. But you do have to begin to change. And that's a good place to start. Assess how you're treating yourself. And then assess how you're approaching others. Are you waiting with open arms as you've been waiting since you were like three? 
for the people around you to love you, to accept you, to want you, to validate you, to appreciate you, to, to give you a sense of whatever it is that you've been missing. It's never gonna happen. You can change. You can come to them with a place of love. You can come to them with a place of kindness. You can come to them with a place of acceptance. They are who they are, who they are, who they are. Again, don't open doors to toxic people, but sometimes we just perceive people as toxic because we haven't had our needs met and that little tiny part of us that's still three years old is begging and pleading and judging and misperceiving and we're robbing ourselves of a relationship people don't last forever don't jip yourself out of what could be so what is my quote <laughs> now that i'm like 12 minutes in get to the point lady um, Strive to make something of yourself. Then strive to make the most of yourself. I think we do this. This is kind of how we, we do. And I think I like to make it flip turned. We tend to strive to make something of ourselves, especially in our society. That could be our parents wanted us to be a doctor, so we become a doctor, or we want to make a lot of money, so we become a doctor, or God forbid, we actually want to help and heal people, so we become a doctor. <laughs> we pursue a career. We pursue a status. We pursue making something of ourselves. Not living off our folks. Not, you know, to be some productive something giving good positive to the planet and that's usually even secondarily we consider making something of ourselves making a success of ourselves a career we are a walking talking job we're a walking talking title not a person And then once you've made something of yourself, then strive to make the most of yourself. I like to flip, flip, flip you do that back. And um, I say most of us spend a lot of our time in our youth just kind of stumbling and fumbling and finding ourselves and developing an identity that we don't even realize is skewed and messed up and based on all these false pretenses and we're just making a lot of mistakes and then you know we it's a good thing humans live so long because it takes a, us a long time to to really grow up um i'm in middle age and i'm just starting to get there but we aim for the wrong thing first i think before you work on making something of yourself. Strive to make something of yourself, something worthy, worthwhile. Doing a lot of air quotes today. Some people hate air quotes. Uh, uh, to make something worthwhile of yourself. To reach some status bar. To own a particular amount of possessions. To have X number of children, 3.5 children, and uh, the perfect spouse, and the picket fence, and the career, and to, to be whatever it is you've filled those air quotes with in your life as um, becoming. We dedicate so much time, we go to college to become something. 
And then we get there and we realize, why the hell did I even do that? This is not what I want. This is not who I am. Some of us fumble blindly through life and find ourselves in places and some of us work our ass off all throughout our young years to get to a place, a pinnacle, only to realize that the top of the mountain is the wrong mountain, that you've been climbing the wrong mountain the whole time. I think before we strive to make something of ourselves, we first should be striving to make the most of ourselves, to be the fullest, happiest, most balanced, most fulfilled, most self-understood, most peaceful, calm, empathetic, contributory, kind, generous, that's not about you, it's about what you can contribute to others, it's not about others, it's also about you, that you have a stableness, a solidness, a oneness in your character. That you have become a good human being with good practices and a stable life and a stable self. That is genuine and true and authentic to you. That you are a good partner, a good parent, good in relationships. Including that with yourself. That you have fun in life. That you... Our closest, we all continue to grow, but closer to the best possible version of, of yourself. And then when you get there, you actually know yourself well enough to know what matters to you. To be a solid, stable, grounded enough person with all of your assets that you're ready, equipped to attempt to strive to be something and you'll be climbing the right mountain. And you'll have all the equipment needed to climb that mountain because you've managed to get yourself, your life, your relationships, your capacities, capabilities, intellectual capacities, emotional intelligence, stability, security. You've, you've got yourself in the best possible place. You are equipped. You are you the fullest expression of you at that juncture in your life that you can be. And you feel ready. And you feel you know yourself and you've got your life under control. Then, then you strive to be something and you'll climb the right mountain and you'll be ready to climb it. Rather than wasting precious life climbing the wrong one. So, I'm going to say that different. Strive to make the most of yourself. And then strive to make something of yourself. Something good. Good morning, goodbye. Gotta stop these 20 minute videos. Don't know what that is, a mustache? Bye, you guys.